Hi everyone, my name is Radhika Bachu and today in this episode of Elephant in the Room, we are going to talk about the psychology of money. And today I'm joined here by Adele Onyang. Go, wonderful. You got it. <laughs> I got it, yeah, Onyango, yeah. Uh, who you all know really well uh, from her own and very own podcast called Cl uh, Legally Clueless. Yes. Yes, hi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And th I like the name of your podcast, <laughs> especially with like the topic we're going to have today. It's just like, yeah, it's yeah. there, but nobody ever addresses it. So very happy to be here with you today. No, yeah. welcome. And yeah. I, you know, just offline earlier on, we were talking about so many interesting things about money and how we feel about it. Mm. And I just what you described in terms of your relationship with money, and we have a lot to learn. So all of us are going to learn so much. Mm -hmm. But just to get us started today, how would you describe your relationship with money as a result of your upbringing in an African household? And mm -hmm. how do you think it's impacted you today in the way you think about money, manage mm -hmm. money? Um, and I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, I feel like that's such an interesting topic because the current me is like uh, pretty far in like my healing journey and like which definitely impacts my financial decisions and how I view money, mm -hmm. right? But I feel like before I had to kind of understand first and foremost, like from a foundation, money is relatively new historically mm -hmm. in an African context. And so now if we bring it back to like when I was born, it meant conversations around, let's say, saving or investing, etc. were not really had per se in a very knowledgeable or super healthy way. Mm -hmm. A lot of the conversations around saving were just like save because like life can be crazy and you can lose, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like some bad, save for a rainy day. Yes. And it was right? never like save so you can make more money. Exactly. It was, it was just like, just look out for yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you, so you that's are. like, even like when we talk about, I know it's not necessarily finances but even things like taxes mm -hmm. like those are not conversations that we had growing up and so money was more like there was like a desperation yeah. attached to the conversations around money mm -hmm. and then also if, a bit of trauma uh, quite a bit I'm not sure if it's like just a small <laughs> just like a quite a lot of trauma because yeah. if you look at even the disparity of like um, let's say the colonialism era and the people who kind of like had a good life, etc. There was always like vast amount of money and those who were not like had very little. Right. Yeah. And so you kind of confront money from a scarcity mentality and almost like a desperation because it was like what helped you see the next day, what helped you mm -hmm. get food for that day. And then now you have to hustle. So even conversations around, I want to say like with my great grandmother and then to my grandmother and then to my mother, but like those conversations, so there's not enough money to start talking about, oh, invest. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like we're just, we just want to see tomorrow, right? Yeah. Um, but like watching my mom now when I was younger, my mom was an accountant by trade, right? Great. By profession. And that's what she studied and excelled at. I then found out through therapy that my emotional relationship with money was heavily influenced by watching her walk away from a bad marriage, which was her marriage to, to my dad, mm -hmm. um, and still not miss a, be a bit because she had her money in check, of right? Course, yeah. And so then in my small young mind at that time was like, oh, okay, so you need to have this money thing so you don't rely on a man. Because if you rely on a man, and things go left, then you're in hot soup. Do you know what's really interesting, actually? I, hearing you say that, I remember my dad saying, when you get married, you will always work because mm. you need to be financially independent. And I think moving from that space is just kind of understanding that, yes, I was seeking financial independence, but it could be more efficient if I allowed myself to understand tools and not hoard. What happened is then I started hoarding my money. I understand it. But like the conversation needs to go a bit deeper because yes, you you it looks like you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Because I'm like, but I'm saving. Yeah. And I was told put my money in a bank account. 
and, that's and like great. that's what I'm doing. Like I'm not spending it <laughs> recklessly. So yeah. it, to you, you're like I'm doing the healthy thing. But when you start to understand certain things, you're like, actually, wait, this might not be working in my favor mm -hmm. if I'm really seeking my money working for me, yeah, right? Of course. I don't know, but a lot of females, when I speak to a lot of people now, yeah. when we talk about, oh, how do you manage your money? I yeah. get a lot of financial advisory calls. And a lot of their habits are, oh, I had a shitty day or a bad day. Yeah. And I'm going to go treat myself. I do believe that everyone's relationship with money is personal. We yeah. just don't know it. And sometimes society changes how we sh think we should be spending yeah. our money. And the key, and what I'd love to unpick today, is really understand how do we go away and think about what's important to me when it comes to money so mm -hmm. that we can build the life that we want mm -hmm. by being or having a healthy relationship with why we're trying to save money, why yeah. we're trying to hoard money. Going back to like the, the rewarding mm -hmm. thing, I think I had to, I don't know if it's, how I was brought up, but maybe many people would re relate with this. Kind of like spoiling yourself is like wastage. So you yes. almost feel like you have to justify why I'm spoiling myself. And the reason, the way you so justify... So it was like a bad day. day so I had spending. Yeah. And so kind of like unpacking that and saying, actually, I really like going to the spa. I like getting a massage. Yeah. Okay, how much is it? How often can I afford it based on how much it is? Oh, I can do it once a month. Great. So it doesn't even matter if it was a bad day or a good day. Yeah. It's just this thing I like to do for myself, good or bad day. And there's nothing wrong with it. I think when I was talking to like a money educator, she was saying, you can actually have a money market fund that yeah. is for your ha your happiness. Yeah. Just the things that, you know, those are Easy, for me. And she's yeah. like, you don't even have to explain to anyone. Someone might look in and say, spa, that's a waste of money. money. You, you know, this is important you. for me. It makes me happy. Yeah. And I'm making sure I can afford it, yeah. you know, in a healthy way. And so kind of like unlearning that thing of like, it's not waste wastage. I'm not being reckless. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. also important. And weirdly enough, you thinking it's wastage comes from your childhood. Yeah. When your parents are like, no, we're not going to waste money on this. Because to them, that was a waste. Yeah. And it didn't make them or they didn't see the value in it. Yeah. But to you, having a spa day is yeah. something important. Yeah. But it's really interesting because yeah. I do want to unpick a little bit more about in this modern society, mm -hmm. how do you think young millennials, Gen Zs are thinking about money mm -hmm. in the perception terms of how people live their lifestyle mm -hmm. versus when you grew up yeah. and what our parents told us, how to yeah. live our lives? I'd love to unpick that a bit more. I think it's such a very confusing time we're in and there's never been a greater need to be of stable grounded grounded and really be in touch with this is who I am this is what I want mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what's around me yeah I'm very in touch with what I want and like the life I want to live today and in future yeah. the desperation for a particular perception mm -hmm. of yourself to be out there and like creating that perception at whatever cost, even if it's crazy debt, right? Yeah. So for example, I'm currently looking for a car and mm -hmm. I've driven the same car for like 13, 14 years. Okay. And it just reaches a point that it actually gets more expensive to, to run. To run. It's a bad thing. investment. Yeah, now, now I'm yeah. like, okay, I love you, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> where we have reached yeah, I've got to go you know yeah. and so I've been like looking and I'm very clear I don't want financing yeah. and so the, how I entered the conversation is like based on what the money I have what can I afford mm -hmm. okay and then there's what do I like because yeah. now I'm also realizing that's also important I'm of like course. I like this what I've been finding is that a lot of the advertising is more of here's this is a deposit and not the actual amount of the car. Mm -hmm. So it's like really what's being pushed is buy this on financing and pay yeah. slowly and the interest is ridiculous. Whenever I hear these conversations, I'm just like, wait, what? Like, yeah. Because in my upbringing, and it may be different for another Kenyan, but for mine, I never kind of saw that mm -hmm. in my family of like, we're desperately trying to live a life that is more about perception so i feel like we're slowly shifting even if you see the adverts yeah. and whatever it's like we're slowly shifting into um 
you know, those industries tapping into, oh, so people are more concerned about the perception and what looks like stability and what looks like wealth yeah. and not the actual wealth itself, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's cash in on that. And we're slowly moving into that. And I get it. Um, there is an element. I understand my trauma, even a concept like good debt yes. is a concept I can't grasp. And I'm very aware I can't grasp it mm -hmm. because of my trauma. Yeah. We're moving towards bad debt for perception. Correct. And I, I just, I'm wondering if people are making informed yeah. decisions, yeah. you know. And, I, and I, that's really interesting because I think a lot of people, when they talk about wealth, they think it's a house, a car, mm -hmm. the shoes you're wearing, mm -hmm. the bag you're wearing. No, it's not. Mm. Wealth is actually money that is put away that you don't actually access. Mm. So for you, when you say, oh, got good money in, in the bank, yeah, that is wealth because mm. it's something that you can rely on. Mm. And I think the perception of what life should be is really important mm. because a lot of people think that life is having all these amazing things but financial freedom and being able to do what you love to do yeah is wealth right so when yes. you say like adele you don't have to wake up every morning at 6 a.m to get to work yeah you chose the entrepreneurship life yeah. which is really difficult yeah but you're you're the control of your own time because mm -hmm. you are in the entrepreneurship journey yeah. now if there's any advice to the younger generation thinking about i want to have a million dollars mm -hmm. or i want to have a million shillings what advice would you give them when it comes to building or thinking about money and yeah. how to a discover if they have any money traumas? First, I think it's possible. I yeah. think I just create like I think from a, a space of like abundance. So I'm now unlearning that, that yeah. things that are defined like that are luxury mm -hmm. are for a select few. Like yeah. you should always be struggling. And I'm like, no, actually, you can aspire. Yes to these things, these, mm -hmm. these paths you can take to them. And they are for you. It doesn't, you, just because maybe you look different or your background is different yeah. doesn't mean that that's not for you. So I'm always like, come into it thinking, this is also for me, that's one. Okay. But also come into it like, uh, arm yourself with knowledge. So it's very important to like, call yourself to meetings and just understand what your weakness is, yeah. you know? And so I know what my weaknesses are in terms of like money. Mm -hmm. When you understand what your your weaknesses are, mm -hmm. you can start, you're aware of them. You yes. know, it doesn't mean you're a failure at things or you're bad. I think people like to say like you're bad with money. I, those are terms I would hear growing up. Okay. And I think that comes down to maybe the investment that somebody's presenting to mm -hmm. you is they're not the right investment for you. Cause for my personality, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I feel like young people need to understand that. And, and then what I'm also learning now is like the power of delayed gratification. And it's yeah. wonderful. Um, I've started understanding how before, even with savings, mm -hmm. I used to, because, you know, entrepreneurs, it's not a salary, right? No. Even the a thousand bob is important to yeah. save and so I started doing the 52 week challenge to yeah. learn that I was like okay I actually want to teach myself yeah that small amounts build up to something yeah and I want to feel the delayed gratification that comes in 12 months you yes. know from that um, particular account for the challenge that when yeah. I when I do it I never touch the money. Yeah. In terms of entrepreneurship, it's again the same thing. There's so much to learn from other entrepreneurs, and there's a there's a strength you have, and I think sit in that, and that's wonderful. But be very clear on what your weaknesses are, yeah. so that you can either hire people who can help, or you can now start working on them if it's a, if yeah. it's something you can change, right? Correct, or you yeah. want to change. Yeah. Be very careful about the decisions you make with your money and because it can life can be long but also it's never too late to do exactly. better initially yeah your relationship with money was okay i can't do this i can't save mm -hmm. i'm gonna try and do it and when i get to that 52 week i'm gonna spend it mm -hmm. but then over the relationship of you yeah. over the year you kept saving and you were like hold on a minute yeah i've discovered something new about me mm -hmm. and i think that's what's really important here is that actually we all have money traumas and yeah. we all think of these things but when you put yourself in an uncomfortable position or you put yourself on up to a challenge yeah. that you think you can't achieve 
and you achieve it, you've changed the behavior. A hundred, and it feels Great. so good. <laughs> There's a lot of talk around financial abuse, like mm -hmm. historically in relationships. Um, first of all, I know that financial intimacy is actually a thing that's not very common mm -hmm. between couples. Mm -hmm. But then in addition to that, Instead of physical abuse, emotional abuse, yeah. there's actually financial abuse that is, yeah. that is trending at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. It's actually like it surpassed emotional and physical abuse. Yeah. Looking at it in the context of um, the, the power dynamics in, in gender and like access to money, access to jobs, access to proper pay, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Women are always like disenfranchised when we think about things in that context. Mm -hmm. So of course you're more vulnerable and you will be on the receiving end more in financial abuse, even though we know when we talk about that, it, it can be the men who of are course. on the receiving end. There's a deeper conversation, even if we link it to like femicides and these, in the country, we started January really badly and there was mm -hmm. conversations, even, even from the past of like, um, you know, I sent her this much and she didn't do this. And so I think um, there's two things that can sit comfortably with each other. The first one is that there's no amount of money as a woman that's going to keep you safe from being raped, from yeah. being killed. And we need to ensure that like the systems don't protect perpetrators and yeah. criminals and murderers first and foremost, right? Yeah, of course. Obviously, on that end, I feel like the socialization, we need to think about, okay, so how are, how are men being socialized? Okay, so then what conversations around money are being had with daughters mm -hmm. in your typical African home, yeah. right? Are those conversations happening or are you pushing, let's say, your son more mm -hmm. towards conversations around finances? Yeah. I think then we need to talk about, okay, what's the socialization? We really need to start saying, hey, this is what, and maybe not from a trauma-informed perspective, but mm -hmm. from a, you are, as a woman, capable of being financial independent. You are capable of running your own business. Yeah. You are capable of, even if you're employed, going in and asking for this amount because you know you're worth it and that's another there's research that shows that women will go in and ask for way less 100% than what men ask for yeah. so then it's like okay but why there's a socialization that's happening that's yeah. really counterproductive for us and so I feel like a long-term solution is that but financial abuse and it's very it's it's very it's almost as tricky to nab as emotional abuse. Yeah. Because how do we get you out of the situation? But also even before that, before even anybody realized that financial abuse is happening to them, the awareness part is missing. This and I, I think it also still goes back to socialization because yeah. it's like okay, one partner is meant to be making the financial decisions, and I'm. I'm out, right? Yeah. And you don't start noticing when it's been used as a manipulation tactic. And Correct. Maybe there's a leash. Like, you think yeah. you're free, but you're only free in these, <laughs> this circle. <laughs> you know That's what I true. mean? Yeah. So you know what's really interesting? I have children at home, mm. and I find myself doing cultural biases mm. without even realizing it. And yeah. when I reflect, I'm like, hold on a minute. That shouldn't have happened. So I have a boy yeah. and, a, and a daughter. Yeah. So it happens unknowingly. Yeah. And I think it's upon us in this generation to do that audit and say, hold on a minute, that was incorrect. Yes. Yes. No, and, and I think there's so much truth to it. And I think definitely in the African context, that financial um, abuse comes from the psychology of money then, mm -hmm. right? It stems into your nervous system. This is how you think it should be. And then you mm -hmm. let certain things go. And it's really important for us to talk about these things so people mm. can break out of it. Mm -hmm. When it comes to making financial decisions, are there any tools or techniques you mm. use in order to stop? Like we said, mm. it's inherent in us, yeah. we do it. Is there any tools or anything, yeah. anything that you can share with others to help you say, okay, how do I change my behavior when mm -hmm. it comes to money? I think the first thing, I'm just gonna share the things that made me feel good, okay. right? So the first thing is understanding the that when you hit uh, 
let's say if it's like a goal mm -hmm. like with your savings or with your you actually invest and you put in that money i kind of like sorry i'm very creative and a poet i bottle that feeling okay oh that's really interesting. right yeah. and i'm like me i've stored this feeling yeah. right so that the next time I want to move from trauma or scarcity, I go back to that feeling. Okay. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We're okay. If we see, we we've learned we've unlearned the bad habit, and yeah. we're doing this good habit. So let's just keep doing it, and you'll keep stocking up on this good feeling. Okay. So the things that you feel you can't achieve start, and you when you start achieving them, even on a small scale, it. Feels, feels so, so good, good and that propels you to keep going yeah the other thing is like just knowing where your money is going yeah that's it's very uncomfortable because i know there are some very nonsensical <laughs> places but it helps you be very aware yeah about yeah the the decisions that maybe are not working in your best interest mm -hmm. and the ones that are and you're like oh i can build up on this one mm -hmm. you know um, I think I also had very high, uh, unrealistic expectations. Got it. So being very honest, yeah. But this is the amount that I work with per month. Now the hard thing is like I'm gonna have to make sure this amount is coming in. Yes. You know. But this is the amount that I is yeah. very realistic that I work with on a monthly. Um, Way. So do you review your budget on a month? Like, do you review your financial status on a monthly or do you do? I budget monthly. Yeah. So I have my monthly budget. Yeah. But I review things quarterly. Okay. Yeah. So the, I think one of the beauty of our entrepreneurship, it yeah. makes you think of yourself as a business mm. and you realize, oh my God, I should be running exactly. myself as a business. Exactly. I've also been very graceful with myself. Okay. I know there are a lot of other financial resources I need to tap into. I'm mm -hmm. very aware that I need to do better with my investing. I need mm -hmm. to do better with certain things. But I'm being very graceful with myself. Even in those moments, I'm not talking down at myself. Yeah, that's very I'm important. I'm like, don't worry, we're getting there. Like, yeah. I feel you. I understand. We're getting there. Um, today, let's just read this article about it. Yeah. Tomorrow, let's go for this webinar. Or let's ask this person this question. Mm -hmm. So just be graceful with yourself. Take ad advantage of um, resources. Yeah. There's lots of free resources now. Exactly. So when you start having like those realistic expect or standards f or goals for yourself, then you stay away from shame. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I wanted to understand from your side. You've now realized that, okay, I'm a hoarder and I want to see my money mm -hmm. on in the bank, yeah. physically, tangibly that. Yes. How have you coached yourself to say, okay, I'm going to now take this hard-earned money and invest it, but I need to do it in a responsible way. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure our listeners would be, yeah. are also feeling the same things. Like, oh, I know nothing, A, about investing, so I'm yeah. scared. Yeah. What have you done? How have you coached yourself? So two things. The first thing is understanding that in some scenarios, based on my goals, that keeping it in the bank mm -hmm. is leading me to the thing I fear most. There are now better spaces you can keep your money where it's it's earning, mm -hmm. and you, we still have the tools of looking at it, which yes. is good for my, <laughs> yeah, yeah, good for <laughs> for my system. I want to yeah. be like, oh, okay, it's still there, great. Yeah. But it's not losing value, yeah. right? So that's one thing, and just like educating myself, like, oh, this thing I thought was good, is actually counterproductive in the long run. Correct. That's one. The other thing was there's a tool in one of um, the banks that I, like a local bank, where it's a questionnaire Okay. to help you. And it was a thing that completely changed how I view investing and like my decisions around it. Okay. And they before you even see what the different portfolios are, yeah. you do this questionnaire to understand Who your you investment are. personality. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'd never done that. And no one had ever told me Just everybody and most of the investments that are talked about or that are trendy are very high risk ones. Yeah. Those are the ones you hear most about. So in my head I thought all investments are Obviously. high risk. Yeah. And are going to lead me where? Where I fear. And when I did it, I kind of now then I saw the portfolios that were suggested for me. Yes. 
were not the ones people that were trending. Yeah. And it was because I'm not a high risk investor and there's just nothing wrong with that. That's just not me. Yeah. So understanding that helped me and I was like, okay, maybe I start with a small amount. And now I mean I don't it wasn't the case before. Mm-hmm. And so I still remember somebody telling me to invest a million shillings in something. Now for someone else they could have been like Absolutely, like yeah. it makes sense. But for me, I was just like, eh, hey. Hold so then, on. when I lose it, please, I'd rather see the money here and yes. count it every morning. I think it's like having that and knowing, like, oh, yeah. it's like I can just put a bit fast, and it helps ease me in. And you can then learn. So theory, exactly, learn. Like theory is great. Like people telling you, like this yeah. is how you invest. This is what you yeah. do is great. But actually, being able to do it. And then learning yes. and seeing, okay, if I put in 10,000 shillings, yeah. what happens with my money? Okay, this was right. Okay, I'm confident. Yeah. I can put a bit more. In the spaces where I had gaps with mm-hmm. knowledge, yeah, tapping into resources, it mm-hmm. helps reduce my fears. Because sometimes your fears are because you just don't know. Yes. Yeah, you know? The unknown is scary. And if you counter your fears with knowledge, yeah. then you're like, okay, this makes sense. When you sit with that trauma, if anybody watching is sitting with that trauma of like, I don't want to do anything with my money because yeah. I want to sit in and watch it. Yeah. There, you can either choose to just sit in that, which is very uncomfortable, yeah. or you can choose to start doing small things and you will be surprised at how, how well you do. It's not something that, again, it's not a yeah. space that's not for you. And I know you've done a lot of work in um, like building yourself. Have you yeah. read any books that have helped you financially? Have I read any financial books? No. I think also because I consume better in Watching. conversation yeah. and in video Videos. format. Interesting, um, so do I. Yeah. yeah, and so, and when it's a, maybe it's also the element of, um, a person who looks like me and is talking, their examples are like really? Wayaki way. Yeah, and I, I'm yeah. like, uh-huh, yeah. I know that place. You know what I mean? And then now that's, uh, my anxiety goes down. So if it's something, a lot of the stuff I consume is very, is local. Is local. I consume a lot of local financial literacy content. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know yeah. for us as well. Yeah. Uh, how y- it makes you feel. And it makes me, it's, it, my anxiety just goes down because I'm yeah. like, you know what I'm working yeah. with. And when the examples they give are very relatable yeah. and it feels like, yeah, I do that too. Yeah. Or I've seen that. Oh, so it's just on this road. I just, or it's this link. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. Again, so it goes back to it being tangible for you. Yeah. And that's, so just, like diving into your psyche, it's actually you would like your money tangible. So when you can invest in things that you heard of or you know someone else yeah. doing is really interesting. Yeah, no, I think that's so smart. I think yeah. this has been such a wonderful session. Yeah. We're going to wrap it up now. Yeah. Do you have any closing words? Um, I think it's just one, please continue bridging the gap mm-hmm. um, between the super hard financial concepts and and lingo yes um because the more and and those of us who want to do better with our money mm-hmm. but we feel locked out mm-hmm. because we don't understand that yet it's for us yes. you know um i think me understanding that that space is for me like i i should actually be in any investing conversation mm-hmm. It should be me to decide I don't want to be in that one. Correct. Not that that space is locking me out. Yeah. Um, and I don't think lack of knowledge should keep someone away from something. We should be solving mm-hmm. that lack of knowledge and then welcoming more people in. Mm-hmm. I think we should start um, welcoming and accepting a better a better life mm-hmm. for us mm-hmm. and understanding that finances awards us or money awards us an abundance of choice mm-hmm. in that life. Yeah. And so don't lock out what you can achieve in your mind already. Yes. So if you dream of owning a home, it, that space is for you. Yeah. Like even if you have 500 shillings in your pocket right now, accept that one is for me. 
a lot of us give up on our financial habits because in our minds we've given up on any ambitions or dreams that we have yeah and so i just want women to like man we've been on survival mode for so more long so long let's let our rebellion also be joy and luxury right yeah, now yeah. you know yeah, yeah. yeah so that that really is my parting shot yeah. yeah no and adele i think um you've summarized it well um i would just say to our listeners just remember that there are some behaviors of money come from your childhood and spend mm. a bit of time trying to understand why you do the things with mm. money and we, as Adele said, there's so much content out there. Mm -hmm. um, check out Dobu's uh, web page as well. There's so much content we put out there about how to think about money in a more non-emotional way mm -hmm. with, our, with no money traumas mm -hmm. and use it in such a way that it can make your life easier. So those mm -hmm. dreams and aspirations you have, how can you take your hard-earned money, invest it in a mm. responsible way mm. where you know you can achieve that dream faster? Mm. So I hope you had a great time listening to the episode. And um, please check out Legally Clueless. You all Yay. know Adele. She has an incredible page. She talks about great topics that are trending today and things. And you're always learning, which I love. Mm. And I wanted to add that last time when I did a podcast for your yeah. uh, podcast, it was an absolute success. And today people tell us, oh, I heard about Dobu through oh, Adele. Oh, that's and wonderful. We love it. We love it. We're like, oh, that's great. It's great. Yeah, because yeah. It was a, it's a nice conversation. Yeah. It's real. We loved yeah. it. Yeah. So thank you all for listening and catch the next episode. Hold that. <laughs>